Uh, there we go. Now it's the now it's still the wrong scene. There we go. We got it. We got it. We got there in the end. Hello. Game. Well, this it's not really. Here we go. Game. Well, you gotta wait for it. It's its first time loading for the night. It's gonna take a minute. <sighs> there is no movement, but there is solidity at least. And potentially, <laughs> yeah, cool. That's what I wanted. Look at him go. Perfect. <laughs> Some kind of yeah, that is so that is the default physics. Ah, he's a capsule, that's right. That's why he's doing that. Uh so we gotta make sure that the rigid body no. The collider, no. The rigid body. Uh constraints, here we go. Uh freeze rotation. No rotating allowed. So yeah, he doesn't actually move around on his own. I can't do that with the keyboard yet because we're going to work on that tonight. Humble beginnings. All right, so there's many things that I'd like to point out here. One is the way that slopes work in a lot of video games, really. Let's zoom in here. This is something I have such a problem with. Okay, so imagine, if you will, that the... Let's see, can I add a box collider to show what I mean uh, yes and there we go we're gonna make this green box the important one okay so a lot of video games will just wrap their sprite in a green in a little box like that okay so green box tough to tough to see and that is the solidity of the object so it's like boop 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 I'm snaky all right All right, so kind of moves like along that, and that's fine. And you know, you you bump up against a wall, and it's like, okay, that's that's fine too. But then you get to slopes, and everything everything goes crazy because if you use a rectangular object to represent the bounds of of the object in question, then if you check for solidity against that rectangle, here is where it goes up the hill. Because the corner can't pass through the solid object. And so you get this really weird looking thing where it's just floating. Now, Dabble Worlds does things quite differently. And it does kind of a special case with slopes, which is for the sake of solidity, when you're looking at slopes, do not use the entire box. Use a horizontal or a vertical slice through the middle, and that's the only thing you use for the solidity is the point in the middle. So it gets all the way to the middle, and then it starts going up. And that looks much better. Hello? Hi. Oh, are you ready? All right. Be right back.
Hi. <laughs> She's a little bit grumpy tonight. You couldn't tell, but trust me. Anyway. So how Dabble Worlds does slopes is we only look at the center point. <laughs> Just like me, for real, for real, France, France. Um, and I feel like that makes it look a lot smoother than using the straight up rectangular collider, so to speak. Dabble Worlds doesn't use the term collider. It just has a hitbox. Every object in Dabble Worlds just has a, a width and a height. And then somewhere in that vicinity, we slap some graphics on top of it. And exactly where those graphics are is case by case. Um, it aims for centering it, but some graphics like the hitbox needs to be much shorter than the art or much narrower than the art, but that's just case by case. Yeah. Yeah, so in Dabble Worlds, the slopes, we only look at the center point, which means that a lot of your hitbox is in the slope. Um, now, if there is no, uh, well, that's why you can touch things that are like, say, right here. Like if there's something in this square here, you would technically be touching it if it's like an enemy or something. Um, but there's some really weird stuff that happens if there is nothing, like if you are under here, let's say it's, let's say it's an empty spot, slopes are not actually solid from the interior sides. The flat sides of slope blocks are not solid. Uh, in fact, they just, they just kind of warp you to the slope side of it. I think SMW does something similar. I'm not 100% sure on that. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna remove this box collider 2D before I forget. So I'm hoping that capsule collider helps this a bit. It's it's gonna we're not gonna be exactly where I want, but it's gonna be okay because the graphics are gonna actually extend a bit. Um, let me see if I can pull that up. In Photoshop. The idea is that the exact spot where you land, where you look like you are is going to be kind of in the middle of a, a, a path-looking thing. And I did show this uh, at a recent stream, so it's not like a huge secret, this mock-up art. And it's not, it needs work. A pixel artist, I am not, but we're going to get there. Uh, so this is what we got here. The idea is that the solidity is going to be kind of lining up with this line here. And so your your sprite is going to be kind of sliding along right here, which looks like you're kind of, you know, following along on a path. Uh, and I want to pull kind of a similar trick for slopes so that, you know, you appear to be kind of on a, on a, a sloping path of some kind with this kind of false depth. Now, whether or not we can pull that off, uh, we'll see. All right, so right now, what we need is some movement. Uh, and I wonder, do I still have... Yeah, I've got the basics of Snail Mountain Adventure code here, which is the, the predecessor. Um, waypoint movement, uh, player manager. No, I want player movement. Uh, assets player movement okay so yeah this is the dumb thing that I want to that I want to find a way around I think I have found a decent way around it there's a dumb thing in that I don't I still don't fully get why because both things that I've read are saying oh yeah this runs at this runs at one one call per uh, or 60 calls per second, and this also happens 60 calls per second, but in a different order. And therefore, reading inputs should always go in update, and physics changes should always go in fixed update. And I haven't found anything that really explained more in-depth than that about why. 
I, I can guess a few things, but it it really won't make a difference. If, if physics updates belong here and input updates belong here, that's what we'll do. But what that means is that you wind up with this weird scenario of wanting to check inputs in this function and then read those inputs down in this function. And that's really ugly, because that means for every single input, I have to go through this mess of like adding a new property to say like, okay, did you push this jump? Did you push this button? And then down here I have to say, okay, did you process this button? And now set the flag back to false. And that's a pain. We're not gonna do that. That's dumb. No, stop it. So instead, the updated plan is we're gonna have a dedicated uh, input ma input handler class that is going to process all of the input handling within itself. So every frame, it's going to iterate over the different possible inputs that we have. Up, down, left, right, jump, action. I don't know. I don't know how many buttons we're going to go with. And then all we have to do in our actual player movement is just read input handler dot did I press jump this frame? Or is jump currently pressed? So the idea is I want to have one function that makes it very easy to determine am I currently holding this button? And if so, maybe even throw in how many frames I've been holding the button for. I could see that useful for like confirmation button kind of stuff. Or how many how many frames since I've held the button. That can get a little bit hairy with things like uh, like uh, you could you could do some weird pause strats like let's say I had a uh, a shooting mechanic of like you know like you give the player a gun and I say all right you can only fire the gun if you have not been holding the fire button for the last one second and it's like well doesn't that time start ticking up while I'm paused as well it's like oh, well yes I guess so so you could like fire pause wait one second unpause immediately fire again it's like all right that kind of broke the the reasoning so i'm not sure if it'd be super useful to track how long it's been held or how long since it's been held but we may track that anyway i don't know i'm trying to think of anything that that could be useful for i'm just trying to i'm just playing around with some of the stuff here i'm probably not going to use this i had one idea which is to handle it the way that dabble worlds does <laughs> I got a lot of ideas from Dabble Worlds, as it turns out. It was a very good learning project. Uh, one thing we want to future-proof towards is that by processing everything through one class, uh, we can very... It makes it much easier to add um, input mapping. Like, let's say I prefer jump to be the left trigger button for some reason having everything in its own separate class would make it much easier to swap out what everything is mapped to. We're not going to get to that for a while, but that was my idea is like store a list of bindings, like say uh, left arrow is bound to input action left. A is bound to input action left. Right arrow is bound to input action right, etc. And then have a, a different like You've got key codes for keyboard actions. You've got buttons for uh, like gamepad buttons. And then maybe you'd have another type of bindable in the form of joystick movement. Like if I push left on the joystick, that can be bound to left action. That gets a little bit ugly. And I'm not sure if I want to do it that way or not. We'll see. Like it should be doable yeah because hang on yeah actually that is doable as an abstract method because you could have um you could have an abstract method of is currently active not pressed because like joystick doesn't make sense for pressed it's just is this currently active so make that a function that we have to implement and then so what, what an abstract, should I really get into, does anybody really care if I explain what an abstract class is? This is, this is not a lecture. That, that's not going to help anybody. 
Uh, but I do need to get uh, Snail Mountain Adventure back up so I can actually see what I need to do here. If anybody wants me to go into what an abstract class is, I would I would be happy to. Yeah, we got input dot uh, is <laughs> if you want to. I don't think it will make the world a better place. Uh, dot get um, get key down, and then uh, this dot key code, right? Is that it? What is that hide? Uh, bindable, currently active. Oh. What? Really? Wait, what? Oh, interesting. You have to specify in C Sharp. It's been a while since I've been in C Sharp, but apparently you have to specify that this is this is mapping to the abstract method. Okay. So this is how we determine if a key is pressed. This is the function. For a button on the joypad. Ooh. Ooh, this is this one is <laughs> get butt. <laughs> uh, this one is interesting. Is there a way to get the button ID? Um, Unity get pressed gamepad buttons. Uh, hmm, do I have to map? Uh, let's see here. I need to poke my head in downstairs. I will be right back. Oh boy, oh boy. <sighs> Who knows what kind of terrible thing you've done. <laughs> okay, let's talk about abstract classes. So, you can have a class of objects such as a square and a square perhaps it you know it has it has a side length uh, let's just say integer I know that's not there we go all right so you can have like a square class, all right? And it's like, all right, now I can create square objects. And I, I tell it like, oh yeah, I've got a square of, of length five. Cool, yeah, great. And then also I've got, uh, I've got a class called, um, let's, let's, say, let's say rectangle. And it's very similar, except um, it doesn't have a, a side length. It has a width and a height. You know, because that's how rectangles work. Ba 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 ba. Uh, ba, -ba, -ba. All right, there we go. And also, you know, we need to figure out the the area of of these so we we include a function called get area 
um, that returns. You guessed it. Uh, side length times side length. Or, in the case of the rectangle, width times height. There, there's our two classes. Oh, it's quite all right. It's understandable. And this is great and all, but let's say we had like, let's say we had a bunch of squares and a bunch of rectangles, and we wanted to kind of work with them together for some reason and get the area of each. It would be really annoying to have to have a list of both squares and rectangles and then have to like loop through each of these objects, check their type, and then call, you know, call the appropriate get area function for each. Instead, we can have an abstract class just called quadrilateral. And we always say is that quadrilateral, if you have a quadrilateral, I guarantee it will have to have a function called get area that returns an integer. I don't know how it's going to calculate it. I don't care. And now all we have to do is say square is a quadrilateral. Uh, and we have to say that this is the method. Override, there we go. Now, what does this, what does this give to us? What, what is the benefit here? What is the benefit of saying, okay, sure, now I have uh, two objects, two quadrilateral objects. One's a square, one's a rectangle. Great. Because now, instead of having a list of squares and a list of rectangles to manage, I can just have a single list of quadrilaterals. And the list doesn't care whether they are squares or rectangles. The, all, the, all the list says is, hey, they're quadrilaterals, and that's all I need to know. Because here's the things I know about quadrilaterals. I can get their area. And I don't care how I do that. I'm just calling get area on each one. The squares will use their function. The quadrilaterals will use their function. And that's it. All right, there you go. That's my that's my little two-minute, very, very all-around-the-world talk about uh, abstracts. Uh, so what we're doing here is we want to have a list of bindables. So, for instance, things you can bind to an action in a video game, such as pressing the A button on your joy on your uh, on your controller, or pressing the space bar on your keyboard, or uh, holding the left trigger down, or moving the right joystick up. All of those different actions. There are different ways for us to read in how that works. All we care about is, did that thing happen? We don't care about how, you know, whether it's a button or a, or a joystick press or anything. We just want to know, hey, did that input happen? And so we're having this abstract class of bindable, and we're going to say every bindable type has to implement somehow whether, whether or not it's currently active. Uh, for keyboard, that's easy. For a controller, that is a little bit trickier. Um, that is a little bit trickier. Hmm. So... Ugh. Hmm. Because all we really want... I would hate to have to do this. Ugh. This would be a lot of... Okay, hang on, hang on. Here we go, here we go. Uh, key code... Type of key code. Key code? Input dot get key down. Oh, is there just a key code for... No, that's... Well, joystick button one. Hmm. So in Unity, in, in the actual Unity engine, 
Let's talk about what Unity does give us. Um, Unity gives us project settings, input, nope, something different. Maybe, oh wait, hang on, I think this is it, yeah. So it, it automatically binds some keyboard buttons to a named thing. And it doesn't really tell us like, yeah, here we go, joystick button three. That's what I want. I want to. I want to detect if. I don't want to detect if jump is pressed. I want to detect if joystick button three is pressed, and they don't really give me that. Hmm. Hmm. In uh. In my HTML project, this was actually fairly trivial to just grab the list of items with the API, like the, the list of pressed buttons. Turtle guy. There he is. That's Turtle. He's gonna he's gonna go on a tropical adventure. Alright, there he is. We'll just put him on screen for a little bit. Ah, so peaceful. Is this Dabble Worlds 2? Wouldn't that be something? Uh, tentatively, this is Shell Island, and you play as a turtle, and there are snails, because of course there are. It's going to be a bunch of shell-related things, if you couldn't tell by the name. Um, so let's see here. Get axis is, that's the axis. What I really want is, you know what? You know what I could do? Uh, this is maybe a little bit dumb. I'm just going to get out my controller. That doesn't seem dumb at all, actually. Let's just experiment. Let's just see how it works. Yeah. I don't really have any empty walls up here. I need to bang my head against something. Rough night. Yeah, she was in such a good mood this she morning. She was in such a good mood. Like, honestly, she's in a great mood today, all the way up until, like, last time. <laughs> and get butt. Get butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it all went downhill there. Yeah, I don't know if she just cold or I mean, stimulated. I mean, playing or... in the hose was not a good idea for her today, and I really tried to talk her out of it. Yeah, probably should have just been a firm no instead of a talk her out of it. Situation. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Sometimes she doesn't know what's good for her. That's true. <laughs> we have to tell her. Although I think she's learned her lesson now. She said that she should maybe only do the hose in the summer. After all. <laughs> yeah, after all. Uh, uh, I should have just like had her bath ready for her already when she got in. Just have like a warm bath ready to go. Oh yeah. So that she could just immediately get warm. And I also don't know if she's gonna eat enough today. That might have been protein. That might have been part of it. By dinner time. I feel like she kind of stayed a little bit difficult after dinner, but that might have been us because we were just kind of done. <laughs> Welcome back. You know. Ah, uh, yeah. Because we were we were not feeling oh, our most so patient. The breakdown by was, dinner. you know, I was. Spraying the hose because she wanted to play in the hose in the middle of October. Mm -hmm. Sure, why not? Um, and at one point, she started kind of kicking her feet, which were full of water, and I was splashing water in various directions and occasionally on me and said, All right, don't splash me with your feet. And she did it all the harder. So I turned the water off for a moment, I'm like, All right, now listen, you need to not, not splash water on me. And then she like starts trying to grab for the hose and just force it up. I'm like, If, if we're not gonna. We're not gonna listen. Can you listen to me? Can you listen to me? And she just like, all right, we've hit the power struggle stubborn here. Face, stubborn face yeah, on. stubborn face on. Yeah. <sighs> and then it was all downhill from there. Yeah. Could have been better. It was one of those. It would have been helpful, I think, if we could have switched at bath time because you guys were already in mm -hmm. a power struggle, and if I could have switched with you and you like cook dinner. Yeah. But you don't know. I don't know how to cook that dinner. <laughs> yeah, Al knows all about that. Yeah. Yeah, 
never want to get into power struggle territory. It does not go well. Everyone likes to say, oh, I'm more stubborn than a two-year-old or a four-year-old or whatever. And it's like, maybe you are. Probably not. But also, it's not really something that you're proud of if you are. Don't brag about that. <laughs> they yearn for it. <laughs> they want to test their yeah, might. Yeah, they do. Test they want to see might. what they can control. If they can, if they can win. Tough time. Mm -hmm. But we made it through the day. We are rewarded with the weekend. True. Yeah, I was expecting like her overstimulation point to hit yesterday. Because we did like too many things really yesterday. Like, I was surprised she made it through yesterday without being a mess. Yeah. At the end of it. I was not expecting it. Heck yeah. We do not. But that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Mm -hmm. We're good, we're good. I'm getting holes in these jeans too. Yeah, we gotta get you some new jeans again. Man. It's all this crawling around on the carpet. Yeah, probably. Why am I not seeing this happen? Maybe. Like your old ones, I didn't want to because they got like really ripped, you know. Because they're not too big of a rip right now. So I did good. I could probably even just like cut up some old jeans. Some of your previous jeans that had holes in them. Maybe, maybe. Just use those for patches. So you wouldn't have to be noticeable or anything. Yeah. Her new octopus already has a hole in it. Oh, that octopus, man. So we're gonna have to sew it up tomorrow. Oh, wow. That was really fast. No. I mean, to be fair, she did bring in the delete file today. Yeah, well. <laughs> uh, probably wasn't helping matters, but yeah. Not, not the best quality, as it turns out. Who knew? You know how she adds a Y to the end of an every animal name? And that's just a uh, name. Oh, no. It's awkward with octopus. Yeah, that's not a good that's not a good name not for that, that one. Yeah, we'll give him another name. Yeah. At first she said his name was Julia. She's now naming everything Julia. I think she she might have caught on to how much we was thought that was a good name. name. Yeah, and liked it. I still just don't know how she even heard that name. She might be not long. Not getting debug dot log. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's not a good thing. It's really loud. I don't know if you want to do something about that. Yeah, I guess so. There we go. Give it a second. There it goes. It's quiet again. Um, where are my log messages? Uh, what, what? What? Wait, maybe, oh, maybe it's because, oh, I figured it out. Never mind. I'm a little dumb. It's because nothing is actually hooked up to any of these yet. That's why. Forgot to get butt. That's why. I, I, yeah, input.get butt. That's what we need here. Mm hmm. Ah, oh, let's have some rest tonight. Betcha, 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 betcha. Hey, Zot. All right, let's see if we get some... Oh, here we go, here we go. Left arrow, right arrow. Okay, you guys may not be able to... I'm not sure if this shows up in the capture down here in the corner. It's, it's kind of behind my head a little bit. Okay, so we get... We get Wazda here, that's good. Okay, so now the big million dollar question. What do we get here? Joystick three, button six. 
joystick three, button one. Oh, this is notable. We're getting we're getting joystick three, button zero, and also joystick button zero. Okay, and I believe joystick X button refers to specifically the controller that is in slot number whatever. But without the number in the middle, just joystick button X, that is just if any controller is having that button pressed. Okay, that is notable. All right, that's also pretty nice because that means that... Uh, that means that for this... Oh, that means that input button is also technically an input key, but just a specific type of input key. <laughs> Get butt. <laughs> so it's basically the exact same thing. Ah, uh, it's just a button number. So why don't we do... Int button num and this dot get or this dot button num dot to string and we're gonna call that joystick button plus whatever. Okay, that should work, I think. So input button can be something like you know, button button zero is, I don't know, the A button, button one is the B button, and so on. And then the last piece of the puzzle that we need is axis. Uh, horizontal and vertical axes on each joystick. So on this little SNES style controller, we actually have only one axis, which is, or one set of axes, which is axis zero, horizontal and vertical. And those actually count as two separate objects and you get a negative or positive value for each so vertical negative positive horizontal negative positive now on a twin stick you get two of those and as if that wasn't enough on some controllers you get uh like uh the the shoulder buttons the ones that aren't buttons the, the actual triggers they can have variable depth pressed and those are actually measured as an axis as well. So that's fun. So uh, measuring insta ins uh, inputs is kind of a kind of a thing. Uh, so maybe we just to do uh, the axis for now. All we really care about is, hey, we have a bindable thing, whether it's a button on the controller or a button on the keyboard or a joystick press, we don't care. It is somehow, it is something we can bind to an action. And so we're going to keep our list of bindings up here. We're going to say, all right, by default, we're going to bind left arrow on the keyboard to action of game left. Now, that action could actually do multiple things in the game. That will be move the player left. Or if you're on a UI with lots of buttons, move the cursor left, whatever. Hello, Hudson. Man, that was some dabble party last night. So that's left and right. And then we're going to have a couple of buttons for up. Uh, up arrow and W. And then a couple buttons for down. And actually, Hudson, you are going to be a great resource for some... Uh, you fell asleep so early. Uh, for some questions on how are we going to build this game out. So what I have planned, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, this is the mock-up that I've drawn up here. Uh, the idea is you're, you're a little turtle critter running around. do 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 wee zoom Jumping on, jumping on things and jumping over pits and maybe there's some swimming on the surface. I don't know if we want to go as far as underwater levels because, let's be honest, those are kind of boring. Hey, nice job, Hudson. Was it some uh, Mario Maker stuff? Oh, muse. Oh, nice. Hey, you get him, Hudson. Uh, let's see here. 
So here's the gimmick with the game. The game is going to be about shell jumps, sort of. You do not make music, but you review music, and people are interested in that. You know what? Being able to, like, hear music and identify what specifically you like or dislike about music, that is the first step to being able to create music that you like. It's like step one is you listen to music and you like it. Step two is you can identify, like, this is why I like it, is this particular type of sound. And step three is being able to actually create that type of sound poorly at first and then eventually in a good way. And that's with, with anything subjective. Is first you have to be able to appreciate it, then you have to be able to identify specifically why you appreciate it. What if you make music but you hate everything? In well, then you're squarely in, in phase 3A. Hello, McFixit. Welcome in. McFixit always, always uh, kind of like show, showing up for some of those dev streams. Deep down, don't we all just love a little bit of talking about abstract classes? Zumba is uh, is Hudson, by the way. <laughs> the name change is not super obvious. Uh, okay, so here's gonna be the big thing: is we're gonna make him, we're gonna make the main attack action throwing the turtle's shell. Don't know where I got that idea. Uh, so, he's gonna throw his shell, and he's gonna go all, haha, goofy underwear turtle. Um, the shell is gonna, I need to draw a shell, actually. Um, let's do that very briefly. I just called the layer Snell. There we go. You lost all credibility. Um, so let's see here. We're gonna be about yay big, a little bit bigger than this. There we go, and then what? What are you giggling at over there? Uh, something no, a little too much, too much. A little bit of this, and a little bit of rim rim lighting. Everybody loves that, right? Whoops, there we go. Perfect. Just like that, yeah, that's totally what I wanted. Um, a little bit of, a little bit of this. <laughs> Where'd you get from, the art store? There we go. That's that's probably about as as good as we're gonna get for now. This is this is the programmer art. Don't worry about it. it it'll be better art someday. Uh, perfect. Been slow too. Uh oh, that's not a good sign. Uh, let's see here. And then we need to actually do the outline. And the way we're gonna do that is a new layer. I'm gonna use this color right here. So I'm just gonna go blah, and then blah, and then grab that, and then blah, and then change layer order, and done. Okay, just pretend that's like readable for, as being like, a oh, you know what, that's why. Reason the reason is because it doesn't have the holes. It needs uh, it needs like you know. Yeah, that's what it needs right there. Something like that, a little bit like this, a little bit like this. It's really real. All right, get a little, get a little bit of a turtle shell bit to it yeah totally totally like that I I have looked at windswept since you guys brought it up 
I really I'm really trying to not look too closely at it because I don't want to like be influenced by it and then everybody looks at my games like oh nice windswept knockoff not that I don't think windswept is like popular yet but it could be here's here's the thing uh and after looking at the trailer because i did check it out is it does look like it is meant for like decent skill level like hard levels i want the idea in this game to be that the critical path is approachable like let's say traditional mario approachable but I want shell jumps to be a completely optional mechanic that open the door for cool speed strats and also the occasional like optional Kaizo levels. So you trying to shell jump IRL today. Oh no. Okay. So the idea is the turtle throws its shell as an attack. The shell goes out and slides along the ground very Mario-like, I know. Um, and, you know, it can surf across... It can skid across the water and stuff. <laughs> Man, it's super for a reason. Oh, no. Uh, and you'll use this to bonk into enemies. So you can hit an enemy with it. That's your attack. Once you hit an enemy with it, the shell kind of just, like, wobbles there. You know, like, when you drop a plate and it kind of... It's going to do that for a bit. And then, um, and then it's just going to kind of be inert. So while the shell is moving and while it's wobbling, you can bounce off of it. If you bounce off of it, it becomes inert. Inert shell, if you touch it, then that counts as like you just, you just immediately pick it up and wear it again. Yeah, beach theme. Everybody loves beach theme. Get you some, uh, get you some steel drums in there, and call it a day. Now, ideally, and I don't know how possible this is, I don't want to go straight up Mario physics with throwing the shell. I want there to be like an air stall when you throw. The result being that shell jumps are kind of free. I want, I want it so that it's about as free, if not freer, than a cape shell jump. Which is to say, there's no timing involved. It's not like, oh, it has to be at the peak of the jump. How do I midair? Hopefully you don't this time. <laughs> uh, but it's like, when you throw your shell out, we're just going to pretend there's a wall here. Because, boom, now there's a wall here. Okay. So when you when you press the button to throw your shell, and this is where I'm gonna need some some input from like the the elite Marioers. Uh, the idea is that you will pause midair as the shell is thrown, and the and the shell will start to go down on its own because gravity. And the result is as long as you're far away enough from the shell, the uh, you will be falling at just the right rate so that no matter what, no matter how far you are, the uh, the lineup will be perfect. It will it will land perfectly under your feet. There's no there's no like, oh, you gotta make sure that you do it at just the right time in the jump or just the right distance from the wall. It's like, no, as long as you're not too close to the wall. Or I guess I guess donkers would be maybe possible. We'll see. I don't know. But yeah, that's the idea there. Is so that the Kaizo stuff is a little bit more approachable. Um, that means surfs are doable. Back back shots should be doable, but they're all gonna be pretty free. Wouldn't it kill you? No, it'll be it'll be under your feet. And so then you'll bounce off of it. You can hit yourself with it. Um, and then there's one more action that I haven't gotten into detail with, which is uh, while you have your shell, you can tap, I'm going to say down while you're on the ground to like shell up for just a little bit, like, you know, kind of sink into your shell. And that's a parry. 
So that will reflect enemy projectiles. Um, it will block damage, but it only will last for a few frames, so you have to time it pretty well. How would that be possible? Since you just jump off of it if you're next to a wall. So what you'd have, let's say you're next to a wall and you throw it. Then the result is uh, shell first bounces off wall and starts going down until it's about this much lower than you. At which point you are also falling at the same speed and presumably could catch back up to the shell. Yeah, so that should still work. Um, make a joke about Perry. Have a good night, Hudson. So here's my question for inputs. And I don't know that there's a right answer to this. I've got my idea, but I don't know how weird it's going to be. In your typical Mario game, you're going to be holding right, or holding run the whole time, basically. And releasing it in short burst to throw. Which is really, like, when you think about it, that's a weird input, right? We'll have seven maps. I might. It depends. I really can't do Celeste very much. Like, it genuinely leaves my fingers hurting. Like, anything anything more than, like, like B-side difficulty. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So, my thought is, what we do is there is no run speed. You're just always doing run speed. I don't, I don't know if that takes away control, but my idea is, like, jump with the B button and tap Y to throw. Like, and that's it. Like, there's no, you're not carrying the shell by holding Y because the shell is on you. So it becomes more of an action of, you know, run around, run around, jump, jump, throw, jump, jump, throw, instead of releasing to throw. Which I understand could be weird for Mario players, since they're used to release Y to throw instead. Uh, I would even consider including an option to reverse the inputs for throw, so that holding Y is not what throws, but... Releasing Y is a throw. I can do seasides in short bursts, but we'll see. We'll see what it looks like. Once you start getting into wave dashes and stuff, I'm like, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> we just immediately get into this mode, this defeatist attitude of, well, we were having fun. So anyway, I think that's what we're going to do, is you throw it by tapping a button, not by releasing a button. That's the that's my weird, crazy, out there thought I wanted to get out into the world, is that perhaps that is a thing. Okay. So. Is this how I want to do this, or do I want to add a constructor? I might want to add a constructor for these. That would probably be a little bit cleaner. There it is. Da, 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 da. And then you can just replace this with this, 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 this. This. Bum, bum. No ultras. Oh, well, there you go. Then we're golden. Ha. Ah, little Celeste. Little Celeste humor for you there. I don't know what I was thinking initializing these like this. There we go. That is much nicer. Okay. So now we're saying all right, if you press left arrow or A on the keyboard. That counts as the left action. But we also want to do some stuff with the controller inputs eventually. Uh, we're not there yet. And this is the same way I handled Dabble World's key bindings. The reason being 
uh, is that it uh, it makes remapping much easier by adding this extra layer of abstraction. I'm kind of it's like I could just as easily in the player code say if you press space then jump versus having this this big layer that ultimately does the exact same thing. The difference is when I want to go back and add mapping like okay you go to options and you want to say I want to set jump to the select button because I'm a masochist. We can do that much easier than having to update all the code everywhere that uses button presses and asks for key inputs. So that's why we do it this way, is we're, we're just creating that, <laughs> doing wave dashes like that, oh, yeah, I do. Um, so jump, throw, pause, cancel, yeah, all the, all the good ones. So jump, we're gonna default that to space. Um, throw, we're gonna default that to shift. I have no idea. Uh, and that's enough for now. That's all we need. That's all we need to get started on on this actual code. Okay, let's keep that up. So what we're gonna do every input. Um, let's see. We want to maintain a list of of key states. And this is a ooh. Let's actually let's actually create a class for this. Um, as if we don't have enough classes in here. Uh, we're going to call this a key state. And what a key state is going to contain is it's going to map an act, a single action to is it currently pressed or not. And alternatively, later we can add things like how long has it been pressed? How long has it been released? Um, is that it? <laughs> that might be it. <laughs> So this does not know about keyboard buttons. This class only only knows about the game actions. So uh, here's another thing on this is that the game like game action confirm may be the same button as jump, but we're gonna treat those as two different actions so that they can be bound differently later on if we so choose. Ah, oh, perfect. Sounds good, Popples. Popples, I really did enjoy that uh, that gun kaizo that you did. That it actually feels feels very doable. Probably because it doesn't have any actual shell jumps in it. Gun kaizo is now a thing. Best part was the background. See, I feel like all you really need to do to make a good background is pick two colors. Like, pick two colors for the sky, leave the default stuff, like the default grounds in the background, and then maybe even turn the opacity of the sky all the way up so you just get a gradient. Yeah, just, just a good gradient and nothing else. No, no clutter. Nothing to distract. Um, okay, so a key state... Key state is going to have um, a key action. No, wait, input action is what we called it because it's not key related. Ooh, I guess this should be an input state. That's what we should call this. Uh, it's going to take an input action. And. Uh, is active. It's too thematic. It's a bit rate. It's a bit rate killer, is what it is. All right, do that. There we go. Well, this no is active. No. We don't need that. There we go. Okay, so now we have an input state class, an input binding. All right. So the chart is. Stay with me here. You know, let's uh, let's get out Photoshop here. All right. 
We're gonna use this as our as our super cool background. All right. So, what we have, we have we have the action. The action is something like uh, jump. And we are going to take that action. And let's uh, let's increase opacity of our of our background layer here. There we go to make this look like a like a video essay or something. Should oh some player made backgrounds? I should. I have some I have some things that I want to add that could make for some interesting contests. Um one system that I think is straightforward is uh blueprints. Um I would like to add uh s blueprints that you can save locally. May I don't think there'll be cloud saves. I think it'll just be saved locally and exportable as text, um, which would make it easier to copy elements from levels to other levels. Like select an area, save it as a blueprint, open up a different level, and pull in your blueprint. I think that would be very very good. All right. So to get from to get this jump, we have our space bar here. That's readable. And we are using an input binding object. This is one we made up. This is our our own little thing. An input binding connects It's the bridge that says, hey, spacebar is used for jump. Um, similarly, let's say um, up arrow would also, there could be an input binding that says, hey, up arrow is also used for jump. So you can have multiple input bindings to a single action and technically, uh, you can also have uh, multiple input actions to a single key. For instance, our menu confirm will also be bound to, let's say, space. All right, you see what we got going on here is that a single, a single keyboard key uh, let's grab another color here to, to fill this out a little bit. A single keyboard key can be... Oh, I drew that on the wrong layer. I see, I see. Can be bound to multiple... Uh, can be bound to multiple actions. And, multiple, and actions can be bound to multiple keys. Um, so the next piece in the puzzle is we have another thing that we're going to have called an input state. And this should be one-to-one -one here. <laughs> uh, so an input state is going to bind this one single action to its state of is the button currently pressed or is it not pressed now as for whether or not it's going to save extra information like how long has it been pressed that kind of stuff we're on the fence about that ultimately that doesn't really matter it kind of makes me Mm. Could we just outright replace the enum input action with a class? 
that might make this a lot easier. That's one less class floating around, because then we don't have to, like, search for the matching one. That's true. Uh, let's pull up, uh, let's pull up the GDB, GDB schedule here. Uh, allegedly, Dupu is doing Geometry Dash, uh, right around lunchtime tomorrow, depending on your time zone. That's, uh, that's 2 Eastern. I don't know. I don't know. We. S I st I st has GQ even even committed to what he's going to be playing? Like we, know I'm doing Dabble Party, which I'm not even doing on my own because I can't be bothered. Here's what. G yeah, I remember hearing him say like he did, five minutes beforehand he's going to be picking what game to play. <laughs> he made something bad. And it's. Is, is he just going to be using it as an excuse to open more Pokemon cards? I, I see what you're up to, GQ. All right. So, yeah. Uh, so, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take this input state class that we've made up, and we're going to merge it with the enum for the actions and just change that to, a, to static classes. So, we'll still be able to do input action dot left but that will actually hold some data not just be an enum um so what will that contain i guess we will we'll give it a name maybe i don't know action name and is pressed, which will be updated once a frame. Uh, we don't need this. Yes, we do need that. And then we're gonna have static input action left equals new input action left. Perfect, it knows exactly what we want. Okay, so now we're gonna do, and I, I want to, I wanna do Pascal casing if we could. Hope everybody's on board with that up down so this may be a i don't think this is too far out there of a design decision i mean usually i don't find out that things are terrible until like months later when i have to change it and realize ooh, this means i can't do this whoops all right there we go so now input action dot left input action dot right these still work Uh, and let's make these public static. Oops. Nice. We got Wooly Bully. I thought you that opened up so many possibilities, and now we have Gun. I've got some, I've got what I think are pretty interesting ideas, but they will require some pretty major refactoring in the Dabble Worlds code. Uh, because I tried to kind of like test it with like, what would happen if I just did this? Will that allow this to happen? And then everything broke. And I was like, nope, I'm going to have to actually go through every sprite to make this work. Still believe it. I mean, maybe someday. Maybe someday. Uh, hmm. So I think what we would want to do now. Ugh, what do we want to do? How do we want to iterate over this? Because we don't want to iterate over the keys because we don't have a good way to map all those. Like, we could sort these by the input actions and say, all right, first let's look at both of the left actions. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's try this. Bound actions is 
bindings dot uh, select a dot what is what is this action a dot action dot distinct wait oh this is supposed to be a uh, yeah mixing up my lambdas okay so we're gonna take our list of, of bound actions and uh, for each action in our bound actions uh, so it's gonna say all right first I want to look at all of the left keys can't wait for the dabble dragon man <laughs> one of these days one of these days uh, all right so we're gonna look at action dot left and we're gonna say all right first I want to grab the inputs. These are the bindable inputs. So we're gonna say uh, bindables uh, is all our bindings that match uh, where a dot bind, no, a dot action equals the action. So give me all of the keys that are bound select i keep wanting to do uh uh ht uh javascript uh link st link like statements boss fights in dab worlds incredible uh so take the binding and then for each bind, so this could be a list of things like, like bind is going to be something like left on the right joystick, uh, A button, uh, six key on the keyboard, space bar. It's going to be it's going to be the different things that can be bound to an action. So we're going to look at each of those and determine, hey, are any of those pressed or are none of them pressed? Before the dabble. Yeah, the dabble dragon is going to be its own special thing. So actually, maybe var um, is any bind active for action Ugh. bindables dot any such that um, a dot is currently active there it is and that's that logic is gonna be determined by is this a button is this a keyboard key is this an axis sword and bow oh geez Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the action and just set the is press. So that's going to either be true or false right there. Um, and then we're later going to be able to read from that. And I think that's it. Because get key down, that's all managed by the individual bindable logic. Get key down here, and then later we'll add axes of get axis, horizontal, vertical, get axis one, get axis two, whatever it is we need. So that should be it. We should now be able to read from the input handler. Um, so the next piece we need is we need to actually grab the input handler, and that should not be too bad, actually. Um, Unity get game object by name, I think is how we do it. Game object dot find. Private input handler. It's not going to be a subcomponent. It's going to be, uh, is it just, it's really just game object dot Find, and then we give it the name, which in Shell Island we are just calling this input handler. You haven't touched Big B's 
there's some there's some fun things you can do with those. All right. Is that it? Cannot implicitly convert. Ah. All we know about it is that it is a game object. Hmm. Uh, do we just cast it? Like, is that all we got to do is just cast it and we're done? Oh. Oh, okay, okay. That's why input imp, the input handler object is a component on uh, yeah, it's a component on there's a game object called input handler that contains a an actual script object of type input handler. Ugh. All right, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, and now we never have to deal with setting flags of is button pressed or anything like that in update ever again. Because now fixed up kit date should be able to just call input handler dot. And actually, we, we actually need to set the. I forgot, we actually, we actually need to, to write the code here to say uh, git is git action. Get is pressed. Hmm. If you drop it frame one. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty wacky. Yeah, you get more height the earlier in your jump that you throw it because it's it's additive. So if you are moving if you have just started jumping up, you have your maximum jump speed. And so you can get a lot more noticeable launch by doing it early um get is pressed and then you throw in a key action no an input action action uh and let's add in a optional um is that how you do optionals in c sharp i don't even remember um uh, let me see what let me see how I called this in Dabble Worlds. Da, 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 da. Uh, where's my keyboard handler? There it is. Here, here's a here's a here's a quick look here. Well, you can't see very well because uh, VS Code doesn't support. I have to I have to bind control scroll wheel at some point um yeah look at look at this mess right here for all the different axis stuff you can do well these are the these are the three axes or two the two joysticks gamepad axis zero negative gamepad axis zero positive gamepad axis one negative gamepad axis one positive this is just a mapping of the uh like the different actions versus what I call them in the UI when you're mapping them. Wish you could kick the bombs around. Oh, uh, like kind of like soccer ball logic about like, okay, it's, it's now active. You can no longer pick it up. You just kind of boot it around. That soccer bomb would be an interesting item, honestly. Like a bomb that when you first kick it, it starts the fuse. And then you can't pick it up. You just, yeah, soccer bomb. You just kick it around. That's a great idea. We should do that at some point. Uh, let's see here. I don't remember what I was looking for now. <laughs> what was I looking for? Right, the is pressed. Um get key stay ah is keep initial only that's what i called it okay 
So what this is, is this is a way of me saying like, hey, like if I say git is jump pressed, right here I can say, well, do you mean just you want to know whether or not the button is pressed or do you want to know whether it was just now pressed? So we do want to, to add in logic for keeping track of just recently pressed. A bomb that can be activated by shooting. I do want to add a lot more uh, shooting interactions now that now that you can get a gun in this platformer. Ooh, that's a fun one. I mean, basically like a circuit, like plug it in circuit wise. Yeah, just use wires. Yeah. Use a, a circuit bomb, which lights whenever it detects uh, powered circuits below it, similar to a light bulb. And that way you can just have it on a wire. Yeah, and just and give it a much bigger blast so that it's more more useful because you could embed it in a wall and then have a like flip lever wall blows up. Uh, let's see here. Get is pressed. Um, let's see here. Let's also include on this action. Uh, on this is pressed. Let's also include is pressed this frame. I may regret that specific nomenclature. is pressed this frame equals hmm. okay so what we have here is we know whether or not it was already pressed and whether it is currently pressed so pressed this frame means that it is currently not listed as pressed and it is now pressed. There we go. Got it. Um, if we want initial only, then return action dot is press this frame. Otherwise, return action dot is pressed. Oh wait, that's a that's a nullable boolean. I want. Is it like this? Uh, is that okay? That's it. That's right. All right, there we go. Get is pressed is done. Fixed update. If input handler dot get is pressed, key action no input action dot left. Whew. Then wait, is this not public? I didn't make it public yet. All right, that was a lot of work just so that I wouldn't have to manage manage whether or not it's pressed up here. But I think we got it. Git is pressed. Um, rigid body dot velocity dot. Uh, add, uh, plus equals vector two. Uh, plus new vector two. Wait, can I do, can I do vector two dot left times a value? I can. Okay, cool. Um, uh, move add speed to the left. Sure. And if it's right, then add speed to the right. Cool, that's it. And also, if jump, whatever button jump happens to be pressed, is initially pressed, and I'm, I'm thinking we do add some kind of buffer, buffer jump, of course. I just, I wanna think of a clean way to add that. Um, then don't even worry if you're on the ground, just add, add three up there we go we did it hopefully
All right, let's see what happens here. Nothing. Yay. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, man. Well. I don't know why I'm testing my controller. I didn't, I didn't wire anything up for the controller. All right. Oh, man, can you imagine if we just did, like, an hour of programming and then just worked right off the bat? All right. That's when you met all the Dabble crew, and what a crew it is. Um, let's attach the debugger. It's going to be hard to properly do this, but we're going to try our best. Okay, holding left. Yeah, it's good. I can't get it while it's pressed is the problem. Okay, well, let's just make sure we're seeing the right things here. There were some there were some good levels in that last uh, that, that big uh, hovercat stream. Okay, bound actions. Uh, let's go ahead and oh, I can't actually look at it yet. All right, action one is left. Bindables. All right, it's all this. That should be false. Yeah. All right, hold on. It's less efficient, but it's easier for me to actually like peek at what is happening here. Wait, even an even more recent level? How recent are we talking here? I gotta s stop and reattach this. Did that work? No. Oh. <laughs> are you talking about the epic new levels? Because I did see some of those coming out today <laughs> during uh, during that stream. <laughs> those, are, those are some good levels. Dev, damn it, no! Hello, GQ. I did poke around in the editor very briefly. GQ, what in the world are you planning for tomorrow? I'm a little bit I'm a little bit concerned. All right. Left, right, up, down, jump, throw. Those are all bound. So left should have two, uh, two bindables. Yep, two bindables. Input key left arrow and input key A. Neither of those are pressed right now. You may upset people. That's what I hear, and that's that's very worrying. See, I'm gonna do input key. All right, so I've added a little a little bit of extra debug code. <laughs> Won't say for what. Is it snails? Oh, see, that worked. It is, it is detecting that I'm pressing the button. So that's a good sign. Yeah, all the bound buttons are, are working properly. Snail confirmed. Hmm. Did you go out and buy like a like some actual escargot? Because that would be taking the bit to 
a whole other level. A cooking stream? An escargot cooking stream? Alright, so what we're gonna do... We know we know that this is actually getting called, but that, that occasionally we are getting inputs read as true. <laughs> I'm shockingly close. I can just read you like a book, GQ. You just try your alt shenanigans, and I just see through it immediately. All right, so we're gonna do if log um, bindable no action dot name. That is not that is private, isn't that? For some for no good reason. Well, of course, but I don't really need them. All right, so let's see. We should be seeing, yeah, left, right, up, down, jump, throw. So those are working. Oh, you know what? It might just be that my player code kind of sucks. Um, instead of, instead of this, instead of adjusting the velocity there. left man amazing that tomorrow is the big day already it's it just comes so fast just sneaks up on you Oh, see that? Oh, hang on. This is notable. Is it because of the order of operations here? So we know that we are occasionally setting this to, to true. Oh, you know what? I bet this only, I bet this is pressed is not what we want. Um, down here where we do the bindable stuff right here, get key down. I would like to know what exactly that is returning. Is there an alternate one? Instead of get key down, get key while oh here we go get key down only returns true during the frame the user starts pressing down and get key returns true while the user holds it down that's what we want that's probably why it was only operating for one frame okay so now if we try it show me a horse <laughs> it's gonna be great the dumbest answers See, that's the sort of things I should be doing instead of, like, programming a fully functional uh, whatever it is I'm doing. Hmm. Body type is dynamic. I guess... Hmm. Should it be kinematic? No. It shouldn't be static. I'm not seeing that happen. <laughs> Number one answer. Typing sense. Perfect. Uh, I'm not seeing this happen at all. So, here's what I'm going to do. Um, Uh, just always deep uh, log 
the current state of left. Just show me left. And let's see if it is in fact only down for one frame. <gasps> it's Germ Dove. Uh, Dove Raid, yeah, totally wasn't here already. <laughs> yeah, Unity done badly. That's what this is, as it turns out. I've already gone through a lot of fun stuff. Okay, see, it is it is being pressed. And then false, and then true, and then false, and then true. It's just not doing anything with that information. Welcome in, Germ Dove. Hope the stream, I mean, it. It was a little bit chunky. You know what? Al, uh, Al asked me the same question, hilariously. <sighs> if you can, if you can believe it. Um, I looked at the trailer, and then I decided I need to not look too closely at this because I don't want to be influenced. I want to make, I want to make this game regardless of, you know, whether Windswept has better ideas or worse ideas or what. So here's what I got. Here's what I got. Um, you can ignore most of this because this was all us just learning how things are going to work. Okay. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. Ba -ba 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 -ba. You got a turtle who's going to be exploring Shell Island, all right? He's going to be super well animated. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to do it my way. Not invented here and all that. It is a maker game, yeah. All right, so our, our little turtle hero, currently nameless, um, he's going to run around, and he's going to encounter some enemies, and the way he is going to attack is by throwing his shell. All right, so then you get, boom. The shell is out. Throw shell. And it's going to roll around on the ground. He's named Les. It's short for Lester. So shell rolls around on the ground. It will bounce off of walls and stuff. It will splash into the water. And eventually it will... It will slow down and it'll do a little like fall in plate wobble and then stop uh, while the shell is moving and while it is wobbling you can jump on it to bounce to to great heights uh and after it is jumped on or after it is kind of like wobbled to an end you can just touch it to start wearing it again. So that's the idea there. Uh, shell jumping will be doable. Uh, the idea is when you throw the shell, we're going to make shell jumps free. So you're going to tap a button to throw the shell. And when you do that, you're going to kind of pause in midair for a few frames during those few frames the shell is going to go ahead and start falling down and then you are also going to start falling down with it after those few frames so that it's going to be basically a free shell jump that's the idea at least so there's not going to be any worry about getting the velocity just right. Like, oh, you got to do it right before the peak of your jump. No. Uh, in addition, we're going to have a uh, we're going to have a a parry move. As long as you have your shell, you can kind of duck into it to deflect projectiles for a few frames. You really are germed of. It's like you were just reading the script. Um, so a combination of throwing the shell and parrying will make for some cool combat stuff. Maybe some good boss fights. You know what? I think Hudson was going to make that joke and then he just decided against it. Uh, 
Uh, and what was the other thing? Uh, oh, if you get hit, uh, if you get hit while wearing your shell, then you are stunned for a moment. You get iframes, and then your shell like like bounces off of you and bounces away. Uh, and you have to run and chase after it to grab it again. Uh, so you get like a Sonic the Hedgehog, Hedgehog style uh, damage boost thing going on. And if you get hit without your shell, then that's, that's it. You go back to whatever the last checkpoint is. Because you see. So anyway, that's the plan. So right now, it looks like this action is pressed. Get is pressed. Should return whether or not it's been pressed. Let's just comment this part out completely to make sure that's not part of the problem. But we should just be looking at input handler that get is pressed. Um, just to be sure, let's handler dot binding. No, uh, what what does input handler have in it? It's just an input handler. It should have. Oh, that's private. Okay, that's fair. Okay, let's just make sure it's not null, but it shouldn't be because then we should be getting an exception here. So that shouldn't be the that shouldn't be the problem. So right now, what we've done is we spent like an hour and a half just. Oh, the reference script on this behavior is missing. Is that what the problem is? All this time, it's just been a problem with getting the input handler. So Unity bakes in like some nice input code that we can use. However, uh, it's really, it's really annoyingly difficult to do things like in-game remapping. Like there are libraries you can buy that'll let you do that. Uh, but I already did it in Dabble Worlds. It wasn't easy, but I did it in Dabble Worlds. And I'd like to do something similar for all future games. And the idea is if I can build a solid enough piece of code, I can reuse that as many times as I want. So that's what we're kind of trying to figure out here is uh, instead of just doing a nice little, like Unity's just got a, hey, is this key pressed? It is, is left pressed? But if you, for whatever reason, wanted to change your controller around to say like, no, I don't want to use WASD. I want to use IJKL. Uh, well, you can change that in Unity and then build a copy of the game that looks that way. But guess what? That doesn't give the power to the user. That only gives you, the, the game developer, that ability to change the mapping. If you wanna, if you wanna let the user change it, you gotta, you gotta put in some, some work. Okay. So, input handler object equals this. Debug.log input handler object. Need to handle every key. See, the beauty of this is that we shouldn't need to. So I, and actually we, we went on a big spiel about this. Uh, so what we've done is we've mapped it out. We've created several different types of objects. So there's layers. On the far left layer, you've got individual keys and buttons on the controller. And we're just calling those bindables. Some of them are keyboard keys, some of them are controller key buttons, some of them are uh, axis tilts on a joystick. They're completely separate. The way we pull in the data is separate. Um, 
the different considerations like dead zone and stuff. There's different types of things to handle there. But they're all, we're lumping them all into one single classification called bindables. Uh, and with an input binding, we are binding those to actions. These are something we are defining in our specific game. Up, down, left, right, jump, confirm, cancel, throw, uh, pause will probably be one. These are the things that some games may not have. It's like every game has access to the input objects. <laughs> Mid-air button, demo dash. And so the idea is you can bind a bindable to an action. You can have two keys, two bindables going to the same action, or you can have one bindable going to multiple actions. So it's a it's a many-to-many -many relationship. And then each of these actions contains a state uh, that is going to track whether or not it is currently pressed or if it was pressed this, this last frame. So. That's where we stand right now. Let's see what we get here. I got nothing. Huh. Let's put a break point here. Are there enemies in this game? Not yet. There's hardly a character. But there will be enemies. Uh, the theme is that the enemies will have shells as well. Oh. Unable to find a corresponding... Wait, what? Oh, I guess... Huh. What? Go find a corresponding location. What do you mean? Hold on now. What's... what's what, 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 why, why are you not letting me debug? That's not a normal thing, right? Huh. Oh, is there like an error or something right now? No. Uh, what do we got here? Debugger enabled. Yeah, that's good. Can you take enemy shells? Ooh, there's an idea. I hadn't considered it that. I hadn't considered that as a possibility. Because I'm thinking the shells are going to be very loosely correlated. Like, we're talking, like, the big old, like, pointy, like, seashells. I'm thinking, like, clam shells, armadillo shells, egg shells, perhaps. Maybe not every enemy needs a shell, but all the best shells. It's Shell Island. We're... The theming is going to be shells. Like, instead of a, like... Like, if you do, like, a, an individual level speedrun mode or something, instead of, like, a 3, 2, 1, go, it would be, like, 3, 2, 1, give them shell. Or, you know, some, we'll, we'll get cheesy with it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, so why... Why can't I no longer uh, create debug points here? Can I still create debug points here? Yes. <sighs> I know what I did. I never actually uh, added the player movement script to anything. <laughs> Welks, but called them shelks. Perfect. Oh my gosh, we got it. Yay. Whee! Whoa! Alright, we got ourselves wedged into the solidity. Uh, Alright, let's just uh, restart that. The good news is slopes are working. They are kind of a pain to set up if you want to set up like multiple types of slope angles. Meow, 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 meow. 
Woo! This is part of the game. This is what you do in the... Oh, jeez. That means you lose. All right. That's good. That's good. Shloop. <laughs> um, okay. So there's a lot. There's a lot of changes to make on the uh, on the whole movement stuff. But we're on the right track. Like, very, very immediate good stuff. All right. Whew. Um, oh, you know what? I just, I just closed the old copy, Snail Mountain Adventure. And I just remember there is some code we're going to want in that. Uh, the ground check code that we wrote. Uh, what I hate about the typical Unity tutorial so much for jumping is it's like, okay, first you need to manually create a little, a little sphere at the player's feet, and that's what you're going to use to determine if they're on the ground or not for jumping checks. And then, and then after you create that, then you have to like drag it into the script as a as a serialized field and all this other stuff. I'm like, eh, it seems like a lot of work, especially if I've got lots of things that need to check if they're on the ground. But there's a way around that, which is, uh, yeah, just to jump. Um, we'll just have Unity create the uh, the grounding object. That's much more straightforward. It's like the main thing. I know. It feels like that should be built in. Okay, so the reason we're going like so obscenely fast is I'm adding velocity every frame that I'm holding left or right, which is we which is quite a lot. You know, why can't snail shells be held by big bees? They should be able to. He's Newman. Okay, so let's fix some of this movement code to start with. Oh, see, this is this is much better than having to do all this. Oh, I is left pressed, is right pressed, and then you got to you got to capture that data and update, and then process it down here. No, 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 no. Uh, there's a, there is some bugs with Big B. If he's holding an item and then the item gets destroyed. Uh, then he won't pick up another item because he thinks he's still holding something. Yeah. All right, so let's serialize. <laughs> Bigby can hold it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He can just do that. I was really amazed by Al's level. Popples, if you should play Al's Big B level if you haven't already, because it shows some really dumb stuff you can do with the uh, with the Big Bs. Uh, what is the default float? I think in Unity, you do need to play Dabble Worlds. Should I let you guys know one of the big dumb ideas I've got that? that will require a lot of work and ultimately not make a huge difference. Um, let's see. Max run speed. One F doesn't seem fast enough, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I haven't seen that happen, but that's hilarious. Um, Run acceleration is going to be uh, 0.1, I guess. And then jump speed or jump force um, 3F, sure. Uh, so one thing I want to add to Dabble Worlds at some point is a... Uh, like a kind of like an SMB2 stopwatch. Um, I've actually got two different concepts, kind of three. Uh, he can hold revive wings. Now that is interesting. If he could carry your corpse into the revive wings, that would be something else. No, um, 
uh, I would like to have like a, a slow mo magic stopwatch that while holding it, all enemies move in slow motion. And not just all enemies, but like all sprites. So like falling platforms will slowly fall, that kind of thing. If you're holding on to it. Oh, because they're holding the rocket and you're holding. Yeah, I guess the same thing would happen with uh, rings as well. The problem is there's some really dumb physics stuff when I try to kind of cheat that in. So I think I actually am going to have to update all of the update functionality on sprites to take in a, like, ratio of how fast to move. Like, am I moving one frame at a time, or am I moving at, like, half speed, quarter speed, eighth speed, whatever? Like, how many frames worth of movement am I going to process this frame? Because it won't just be a matter of, you know, hey, when you move them, move them by half of their velocity instead of their full velocity. There's, there's going to be a lot more to it. Uh, multiply this by uh, run acceleration. Uh, is there like a local velocity versus... No... Hmm. I have some concerns. It's probably fine. Okay, picture this. Picture this. You're on a moving platform. The platform is heading to the right, and you are running to the right. We've already learned the dumb way that you're supposed to handle moving platforms in the Unity engine, or at least the agreed upon straightforward method i don't like it but it works um so my idea is like to get momentum from a platform i just need to make it so that when you separate from the platform i add the platform's velocity to your velocity i never agreed to that. and so the idea that that's just, pretty straightforward means that like as you are jumping you should continue moving with the platform unless you kind of steer against it and that's good we want that but that does not work well for maximum velocity because if i put in a check here that says hey if your velocity is more than the maximum velocity cap it because that means that you can't gain momentum past your max speed. Because as soon as you do, it'll get capped. Ah, unless... What I'll do is I'll say... Um, I won't limit it, but I will say that if... If your velocity would be more than max speed, do not increase it further. I, I want something kind of like ultras to be available. Not ultras specifically, but some momentum stuff of like jumping off of moving platforms to go extra fast. Because I think that feels so good to do. Like I would love, I would love to see if, if when this game gets finished, I would love to see like individual level speed runs become a thing, like people competing to get the best time in these dumb snail levels. We'll see if that's going to be possible. At least for early beta testing, you know, we'll uh, we'll see what you guys like on the runs and see like, hey, if you move this. If you move this this bit of ground like one tile to the right, then people could pull off this really cool trick to gain a ton of speed for speed right. Be like, well, yeah, let's do it then. Um, okay, so we're gonna say if rb velocity. Ooh, dot mag. No, I don't want magnitude. Because uh, can I get horizontal? No. Uh, what would I want? Oh, I hope it's not the cross product. I don't even I don't know, think about what that's. What I want to do is get how much left velocity there is, which I think I can just do that by saying velocity.x. 
Yeah. Yeah, if, if our X velocity uh, is less than run speed, Ah, uh, this is tricky. Let's say that we can accelerate by one unit per frame. We can't, but let's say we can. And we're currently at at point, uh, at, at uh, let's say our max is 10, and we go up by one per frame. So it takes us 10 frames to get to max speed. If we're at 9.5, I want to make sure that we jump up to 10. If we are at... Uh, 10 i want to make sure we stay at 10 and if we're at 10.5 i want to make sure we stay at 10.5 so to do that what i need to do is say if your velo if your x velocity is less than uh max run speed negative max run speed then we should add okay yeah then just add in the velocity <coughs> and if it is now greater than uh is greater no wait if it's greater than oh man negative positive get me uh and if it if that pushes it further left then cap it Uh, then cap it at max run speed. Okay, that's the that's it right there. Uh, and this way, um, if I'm over if I'm over the max run speed, this will not happen at all. Which means that the capping the capping only happens if you start slower than max speed and end greater than max run speed. That's what we want. Okay. And now we want to do the same code again, except flip the signs. Greater, negative. Uh, oh, and this needs to be negative. Yeah. And this needs to now be right. Okay, I think that should do it. That should that should handle our uh, our velocity. That's going to be good. Uh, that should give us smooth movement, and it should allow for going faster than maximum through the magic of platforms, which is great. Ooh, that is some... Oh, I can't, I can't move right. Whoops. <laughs> uh, if velocity is less than max run speed, then you can increase it. And then if it is greater than, yeah, those need to be opposite. Cool. Yeah, I, I flipped around. I, I think I even said that I needed to flip those, and then I either flipped them twice or not at all. All right, it's moving. Whoa! Jump force. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so through the magic of um, Unity, we can change these values while we are right here. Okay, I like the little, I like the, I like the turnaround inertia. That feels pretty good. Hmm, slide to a stop is pretty bad right here. Yeah, that is slippery. Um, why is that slippery? I don't like... <sighs> there are some things that I really do not... Ooh, jeez! That I really do not enjoy. Hello? Are we coming back down? We're not coming back down. There's some things that are really nice, and some things are really weirdly backwards. Like, 
Sometimes it feels like I am just, oh. Uh, sometimes it feels like I'm just playing with a physics engine and not a game engine because things that seem very straightforward, like I feel like every game should have this system. It feels like it's not really built in in some way. Uh, here's something I, I haven't looked into yet, so I don't know if this exists yet, but just as an example of something that games need, looping background music. It's like, I don't know if that's going to be a thing in Unity or not, but that's something that, you know, every game needs to be able to take a track, maybe have an intro section, and then loop it over a certain amount of, of, the, of the song. Um... A specific Unity example of something that I feel like should have been built in with, like, fairly straightforward, is the ability for players to remap controls. Like, at the very least, like, some sort of, like, just check mark of, hey, do you want to include a, a, a tool, like, a, a, a tool menu that you can just go to options and then... And then we'll give you a really basic UI of just, hey, I want to change the key for jump or the key for left or the key for shoot. You know, just something really bare bones. And if you want to get fancier and do it in engine, then like, okay, we'll give you some API hooks that you can use to modify those values. And like an, a, a helper function that'll, that'll save the whole set to JSON so that you can read it back the next time the player loads. Those kind of things, I feel like those should be built in. If they are, I haven't found them. I have found plenty of people selling those options, but... Did I see what Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is doing with the battle themes? No? You mean like the, the music... Because like it actually has like a system for. Jeez, I'm just I'm just gone, aren't I? Uh, it has a system in place for uh, managing the inputs, and it gives you like some pre-built input names, and like oh yeah, you want to bind space to to the jump action. And you want to bind, uh, you know, fire to left control and also mouse zero. And then you got your your left and right axes that are also bound to A and D. And they have a pre-built dead zone and sensitivity and snap and all this other stuff. It's like, great, that's great. How, do, how does the player edit, though? It's like, uh, they can't. I'm like, oh, cool. Great. Well, I guess I'll build that myself. And here the chill made you get into a fight and the overall music transitions into a fighty version and then dies back to... Oh, that's nice. That's cool. You know, you know which game did really good music transitions? Twilight Princess on the GameCube. And I guess technically also the Nintendo Wii. Yeah, that's, that's just something that it's really nitpicky on my part, but it's the exact sort of thing that I thought Unity was going to save me the work of. It's like, now that, now that I've kind of gotten my feet wet with the Dabble Worlds project and been like, okay, I have now built my own system for remapping controls. And, you know, it's, it's not the prettiest, but it's fully functional. Germ rate, hey, short. It's like it's it's that's that's the thing that I would have expected to be to be a little bit more straightforward. Animation is looking like it's going to be an absolute nightmare once I really get into it, and I'm doing the easy baby mode of just doing it in 2D with sprite sheets. I can only imagine how horrifying it's going to be to actually do it in 3D if I want to do like my own models or something. Yeah, I should probably take a stab at that, too. I'm a little bit worried about how kind of, like, fresh it is, so there's not as there's not as much, like, oodles of, of tutorials and content out there to explain, like, every single thing you would ever need to do. But who knows? I'll have to do a little test project with that at some point. This is going to be my first actual project that I'm going to 
hopefully see through to an actual end because I don't count Ballcatcher Pro as a, as a complete project. That's still got the default Unity background skybox and everything. Uh, jumps, right, we were looking at jumps. Beep. The question is, is this respecting my first frame only request or not? Nope. <laughs> all right, well, that, that solves that. Uh, all right, is pressed this frame? Okay, so that should be... If action dot action name equal... Let's just go with left. Alright, so that's supposed to only be true if the action was not pressed coming into the frame, but it is now actively bound, or active, active from one of the binds. Those should be the only times where that happens. So let's see what we get here. False. True. Oh, see, I saw it for one frame there. Boop. Yeah, if I tap it a lot, I can see, like, a single frame of true while I'm tapping. So that looks like it is correctly only... Oh. <laughs> ah, ah, that'll get you. Gets you every time. The old... I commented out the check earlier because I was debugging some other stuff. And then I forgot to change it back. All right, so now... Oh, did you like how I sunk into the ground there? I feel like my input's getting swallowed. I was under the impression that you should be... Hmm. Okay, hold on. All right. Let's debug the the uh is press this frame. All right. Pressed. So we're going to debug when we press the jump button, and we're also going to debug when it detects that we press the jump button in the player is i hope this isn't like an update order issue of like input handler gets updated after player or something oh look at that a pressed but not a jump all right uh clear there it pressed it but it didn't call the update Huh. That's in fixed update, right? Let's take another look at this function here. I am passing in true for initial only because I only want to process this if the jump button has just been pressed. This frame. Ooh, is this going to be one of those things of... Oh, no. Is this getting pressed? Okay, okay. Um, let's do this. Okay. For the jump action... Hmm... 
if it is press, if it was set to is press this frame and also it is no longer is press this frame for some reason, like because the button has been held or released, uh, then we're going to log released. I want to see if we see pressed released before we see a jump. Yeah, press jump release. That's what we want to see is press jump release. There, we saw pressed and released before, I assume before jump got called. So that would imply that update is getting called twice before player movements fixed update. That is actually a thing that can happen, isn't it? Okay. Hmm. Is that a thing? Hang on. Let's double check. Is that a thing? Unity. Update called twice before a fixed update. Uh, update called multiple times in a single frame before function returns. Physics occur during fixed update. Yes. Update occurs as often as possible. Oh, okay. All right. Well, then. Um, okay, how about this? Um, Unity game object update order. Can I set an object to a lower priority? Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, hold on. Okay, wake is called before start. Just call before update. Script execution order. What is that? That could be useful. Actually, that could be very useful. That sounds like a very useful thing to know. Ah, this is edit project settings. Ah. Uh, uh, see, that, that starts to get outside of the actual code, and I don't like that because that's less findable. Um, okay, okay. Okay, here's an idea. Um, okay, there's a fixed update that's going to happen once per frame so and all the fixed updates are going to happen at once so i think what we want to do is during the update function allow us to set values to true like to to say yes these these buttons are pressed but to lock them in place they cannot be reverted back to false until a fixed update has processed. Uh, so we're just going to have a private uh, bool is frame done. And we're just going to set it to true at the end of at uh, fixed update. And when we get back to regular update, we're going to set it to... Um, we're going to set it to false at the end of update. Okay, here we go. Actually, let's not, let's not delete these yet. Let's just comment them out. Ah, yeah. I thought update only got called once per frame just before fixed update, but it actually gets called multiple times per frame. That's fine. That is fine. 
Okay, so you can only set it to false. Oh boy. Uh, this could get ugly. Action is pressed equals is bind active. Or it can also be is pressed and the frame is not done. Or the frame is done. What do I want? No. The frame is not done. If the frame is not done, then we will maintain the current press state if it's true. Ugh. All right, so that is a little bit ugly. I should add some comments for this. But I think that will get us what we need. We're going to find out. Reload. I'm not skipping any this time. I think we got it. Okay. That is a that is a weak jump. This is another thing that I noticed in the default physics. And this I hate that we're going to have to like work around this. Very little jumps. Yeah, we'll we'll fix that. It's fine. And Al, you remember this from the last test project we did. Um, when we've got some speed built up and then we land, we kind of uh, stop. Uh, uh, uh. And I don't really know why. It's like the default physics engine actually does like you get embedded in the ground for like just a frame and it kind of you kind of hiccup a little bit. That's not something like I I spun up a full blank project with just the bare bones of apply left and right force and apply upward force for a jump. And yeah, you can still see it. It had nothing to do with any of the extra stuff we were working on, which is what I assumed at first. I was like, that can't be right. Surely I am to blame here. That's what I'm thinking. It's like, surely people have solved it dozens of times. And here's what I think. Here's what I think. Because there's there's two things. You see two different types of tutorials when looking at this particular issue. In one camp, you have people that you can clearly see that is happening, but it's not the focus of the scene, so they're not really commenting on it or pointing it out because it's like, okay, yeah, it's fine. You, you know, yeah, you, you jump a little bit. You're you're moving too fast. Normally, like the the force is so strong that it doesn't really make a difference. Item two is they're not using actual acceleration. Instead of instead of having like the speed kind of like work up, instead it's just an immediate full speed. Like we don't we don't accelerate. In those tutorials like we're, we've got some code in here where we're like slowly ramping up the speed in that they just set the speed if you are holding left set current speed to this value which means that you know the fact that they are getting stuck in the ground for a frame and their speed is getting set to zero you don't notice because the very next frame their speed is immediately full speed again And that's what's happening. So, I gotta figure out how we're gonna work around that. Because I would like to use rigid bodies because they give us, they give us momentum for free and then we don't have to code that. Our, I would hate if we have to code 
like a basic momentum physics engine in this massive engine that has how does Hollow Knight do it? Hollow Knight doesn't have momentum. <laughs> Hollow Knight is you press left, you are going left full speed. No acceleration up to full speed. You're just going. And and one of the one of the possibilities I've seen in some cases is that uh, when you use a tile set collider, a tile collider, or whatever this is, uh, unless you check a specific box, they are treated as individual colliders and you can kind of get stuck on invisible corners. That's not the case here. I've tried it with just a flat box collider. It's the exact same issue. Dumb stuff. Uh, all right, so let's, let's see here. We decided that we're going to run our max run speed as... 5 and 0.5 here and jump force let's bump that up to 6 why not let's see what happens 6 is a good number I still don't like this the slidey slide oh and that that gravity is uh also uh that's how slopes work huh jeez Hmm. Yeah. Also, there's that. Oh, that's because of the physics material, isn't it? All right, so we got to grab that. Okay, so we need to create a physics material. Uh, which this is another dumb one it's like I, I like the idea of friction on ground so that like when you let go of the button you s grind to a halt however that friction will also apply to the walls which means when you are pushing up against them while in the air, you will grind down against the walls or not move at all because you are constantly pushing into the wall. And so it constantly has to process friction. Yay. And then all the tutorials say, well, the, tr the, the fix for that issue is you just, you just got to remove friction. You just got to remove friction. It's like, but wh what are you? Are you guys serious? Is that is that what we're doing? I don't think that's I don't think that's a good idea. Um oh is it cuz is this the wrong kind of physics material? Do I need a 2D I need a 2D physics material. Ah. I guess that makes sense. You got me there. This may actually speed up our turtle as well. We'll see. All right, so now we shouldn't have the, the wall slidiness. Yeah, now we should just be nice and smooth against the wall. Also, this the fact that this is a uh, a capsule collider means that uh, let's turn on the can I can I see this? Can you just show this to me? Oh wait, that's the wrong thing. This yeah. So because he's got a round, uh, ooh, he's very slidey now. We that's not me. Because he's got a round hitbox here, he can kind of, uh, he can kind of like get up on there and just force him, force himself up on top of the ledge, which doesn't feel great on like a, a 2D style game. Like that's not how those are supposed to work, in my opinion. Oh, geez, this is rough. 
Yeah. It feel it feels really bad to be like, all right, I want to I want it so that when I rub up against a wall, I don't uh, I don't just hang onto the wall indefinitely. And the only solution apparently is, well, then get rid of the friction. It's like, but are you sure? Sticking to walls. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Out of the box, things that hit a wall in the air won't slide down if it's any force applied to in the direction of the wall. The easiest fix, the easiest fix, says this guy, is to do a ray cast in the direction of your input. Null out the horizontal velocity if you're adjacent to a wall in that direction. Oh, and this was another this was another thing that someone recommended for the sticking in the floors. Put your player character on continuous dynamic uh let's see, continuous dynamic collision detection. We'll see if that helps with the with the floor clipping. Whoop, I Okay, I don't know what that was. Seems better at least. That could be the friction thing though. I feel like I'm randomly, yeah, right there. What just happened to my velocity there? Anybody see that? My, what, what was that? What did I just land on? What was? There's some, there's some shenanigans afoot, and I don't know, I don't know what it is. Oh man, I just want, it seems like such a simple ask. I just want, I just want my, what am I clipping on? Huh. Like there's no, there's no min jumps. There's no jump cancels. And yet something mysterious is happening here. Okay, let's let's change this back to discrete and see if it, we see the issue again. I am seeing the, the clipping into the ground again. Okay, so that is helping in this case. We're gonna hope that that continues to help. I don't know what that weird stutter. Hang on, I there. What? I'm getting like some weird air stalling somehow. There, there it was again. There it is. Okay. Okay, okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. That's got to be. That's what this is. Okay. Whew. Oh, good. It's just a bug in my coat. That one at least is just me. Okay, so that is right here. Um, velocity equals new vector two of vector left and rb dot velocity dot y. Oh, right. Uh, this should just be negative run speed. And then this right here should be positive run speed. There. Okay, that one's fixed. Goodness gracious. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. So now the question is, oh, so this guy says, he, this guy with six posts on the Unity forum, period. That, that other guy that said, you're only, 
The easiest fix is ray cast, null out horizontal velocity, but only if you're adjacent to a wall in that direction. He has 6,000 posts. This other guy has six and said, I finally found a virtually perfect solution. Uh, copy the collider, make it slightly wider and shorter, and then put the frictionless material on this collider. Ah, eh, that's, that's a solution. I get what you're getting at. Uh, it feels wrong. So that's, that's, mm. I could see it working. I could see it working. I gotta decide if I wanna stick to a uh, capsule collider here. It's like, I, I think one of the big advantages to a capsule collider is collision detection is a little bit nicer. Like that actually, that more accurately follows the shape of the player. Um, in a game that just has flat 2D graphics, that looks a lot better when going up slopes than a rectangular hitbox does, where you're kind of, you know, riding up invisible stairs when going up slopes. Uh, that latter issue won't be a problem with us because we're gonna we're gonna set up the art assets in such a way that the the visual ground is like a well above the actual ground hey mario maker fan doing all right we're we're wrestling with unity tonight um and hitbox that's that's reasonable i'm tempted to do square hitbox uh like a box collider instead of a capsule collider just because I don't know, it seems like it's gonna be easier to deal with as far as where are the hot points that we need to watch for. Because I could very easily have a, uh, um, can you add a second collider to an object? Is that is that allowed? Can I have a second 2D capsule collider here? And then just make this one. Uh, let's actually let's actually try this out. So we're gonna try this dumb thing here. Oh, the, are they always like that? Hmm. Ah, here we go, horizontal. That's what I want. Weird that I have to specify that, but whatever. Okay, so let's let's try this. So, physics material, this, and other one gets none. So now, we can't go quite as far into walls, but, well, oh, right, that's because the ground still has the wrong friction. I didn't need to apply it to the ground. I don't know why I did that. Okay, so we should have, yeah, we've got ground friction again. It's okay. And then, yeah, that, it works. It works. We're not sticking on a wall anymore. That's a, that's a, it feels like such a wrong solution, but I can't argue with the fact that it does in fact work. I hate that it works because it feels, why do I not like it? Why do I not like it? Whoa, how did it, I don't know how I got up there. I really don't, oh, I probably just accidentally jumped twice without thinking about it. Um, why do I not like it? 
something doesn't sit right with me about it and i'm trying to i'm trying to work through my brain because i should be i should be happy with a solution that works and doesn't require any extra code why would i not be happy about this Is it that now, like, getting the collision information, the collider information about the object is a little bit trickier? Is that? Because now there's two colliders instead of one? Like, I don't know, maybe? It's not the worst. Ooh, actually, if I try to get a capsule collider when there's two of them... How does that even work? Hmm. Maybe I should use a box collider for the main object. Just so I know where it's at. A little bit better. And just make it kind of small. Ah, that does that does some weird things on corners though if I do that. Ah, oh, that's an issue. This is an awkward shape for a collider. Because now if I get up to a corner this is apparently a this is a place I can just hang for a bit. Actually, I can test that right here. Well, I was there. But yeah, I can just kind of hang here and like slide up to here and no further. Which that's that doesn't that doesn't look good. Like you want things to be crisp. Well, I want things to be crisp. Let's let's be fair. So that's probably part of it. Oh, I really don't want to do the raycast solution, but hmm. Let's see here. Any other ideas? So this guy's saying, when you are moving, do a ray cast in the direction you're moving. I doubt this will work. I feel like this should not work, but it could. Uh, we're not gonna have time to do it. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll add some notes. <sighs> Null out. Horizontal velocity if pushing into wall? Question mark. Use raycast. We'll give that a. Ch we'll try that. I really don't like it. But that is something we could actually like attach to a script. At least I think. We'll look into it. All right. Is anybody online? Well, at least we got physics. We got basic physics mo moving. You know, it's it's working. It's not the cleanest, but it's not the worst. It's definitely running a lot smoother than it was. We can still jump in the air as well because I didn't add the grounding check. I'm not satisfied with how slopes are working because they are they are using the physics engine, which I I want them to, but. I don't want to be slowed down that much by slopes. That's not good. Hmm, actually, you know what? One thing I can do. Uh, let's edit this tile map. Oh jeez, I don't I do not know how to properly do tile map stuff. Um I need to get out the Tile map, tile palette, 
let's go over here. This is the ones I made. Do I just click and, yeah, there we go. Just click and draw. Uh, blah, 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 blah. How do I erase? Surely there's hot D? Sure. Okay, I don't even know if that'll work, but we're gonna try it. This looks remarkably similar to the uh, to the first Dabble Worlds level. I, I guess I just know exactly what I need to test. Yeah, see, that's a decent amount of slowdown, I guess. Ugh, but uh, yeah, if you hit at an angle, you really get slowed down a bit. Also, the flying into the air a little bit, because you are basically going off a ramp. It makes sense. So we need to figure out uh, I've got my to-do list somewhere. Uh, let's see here. Uh, snap to snap to slope needs to be something we look into. Um, ground checks easy. Uh, and then we'll do some sample moving platforms just to check uh, to make sure our momentum code works the way we expect it to where we get like where we can get faster than max speed movement by jumping off of moving platforms we probably won't be able to chain that well no i guess we would right we'll see you may actually be able to chain that that would be Ooh. We'll see. We'll see. I've got I just I just had a, a vision of some terrible things that might be possible with chaining momentum. Uh let's see. I don't think we're going to raid anyone today. Um uh, tomorrow is Games Done Badly. The annual marathon. Uh that is going to kick off basically first thing in the morning uh all times listed here are in central time so tomorrow bright and early uh uh 10 a.m eastern there's a little feetsies it is they just he's just tip tapping uh let's see 10 a.m tomorrow eastern i know i do uh turtle's gonna kick us off apparently destroy all humans then we got Day, we got Dupu, we got Panda, GQ, Hovercat stream tomorrow, and then we're ending tomorrow with a with Goose Goose Duck, which is apparently Among Us but different. It's gonna be fun. Uh, the following day, we've got Duffy. I haven't heard anything more about his category, so I don't know if he's still planning on doing CDI Zelda. Uh, we got Sunberry, uh, Super Beast, Teddy, Al, and then. Geometry Dash badly. It fits so perfectly. And then we are doing Dabble Party. Sunday night. That is going to be a stream, let me tell you. <laughs> Get ready for disaster. <laughs> I've tested it. I had one successful test run of the game, so it's probably going to be great. That's the one. All right. So there you go. That is tomorrow. Uh, so make sure to uh, check it out. In fact, I'm going to, uh, if you are not already following Turtle, he's going to be kicking things off tomorrow morning. Uh, so just, you know, give him a follow. Watch for that to come to come online tomorrow. It's going to be fun. Toidle. Toif Toidle. There you go. There's sure to be all kinds of fun surprises. I'm done at being angry at Unity. I've made my position known on what sucks. There's so many things. It's like, this should be built in. This is not, if it's a physics engine, it's like, okay, sure. Physics engines can't be expected to, to manage things like uh, players remapping buttons. But it's a game engine. That should be built in. Also, the sticky wall thing. That boggles me that that's like... I mean, I get it. I get it. 
we'll do the Raycast solution. I'm not going to do the multiple colliders. That's, that's a bad idea. I can't imagine that going well. All right, everyone, have a wonderful night. Uh, I'll see you guys at all the GDB streams tomorrow. Bye.